All right, folks, welcome. This is, can folks hear me? Give me a thumbs up. Awesome. This is Demystifying the Changing Landscape of Mobile Messaging. My name is Seth. I see we have got some folks kind of filtering into uh, today's training. Uh, got, a, got a pretty good uh, group here. Um, so per the uh, slide in front of you, uh, feel free to locate the chat and go ahead and uh, welcome yourself uh, to other folks joining us today. Um, this is Demystifying the Changing Landscape of Mobile Messaging. We're so proud here uh, and excited at Action Network to be joined uh, with our friends uh, from Twilio. Um, so I have Jerry Lim who is joining, uh, joining today to lead the discussion, uh, to lead today's training. Um, I'm Seth. <laughs> I actually uh, help to head up Action Network trainings. Uh, if you've participated in any of our trainings in the past, uh, whether that be our 100 levels uh, series on email, data, mobile messaging, um, or uh, our actions, uh, welcome back. I'm glad to have you. Uh, we thought it'd be a really uh, nice offering to get uh, one of the, the experts on mobile messaging, the landscape and how it's changing um, and help folks kind of demystify uh, mobile messaging, particularly for uh, groups that are just kind of dipping the toe in the water um, of mobile messaging. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass the uh, mic over to our lead trainer for today, uh, Jerry, and uh, allow Jerry to introduce uh, herself. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Seth. I'm really excited to be here. Uh -oh. um, can you all hear me okay? Hi, can everybody hear me okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, awesome. So I'm really excited to be here today. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we can kick off this training. Um, so let's get to it. All righty. Give me just one second here. Perfect. And can everyone see my screen? Yep, thumbs up. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so the topic today is demystifying mobile messaging. Um, I'm Jerry Lim. I'm a senior customer success manager at Twilio. Um, previously, I worked with companies including Nation Builder, Mobile Commons, which is now Upland Software, Mobilize America. Um, I've partnered with organizations, including some of the names that you see on the screen, AFSME. I see some AFSME uh, folks in the chat, so that's great. Um, Alliance for Climate Education, United Auto Workers, uh, and also Maleo Education Fund, to name a few. Um, I've included my Twitter, and you can feel free to reach out to me via email if you would like to connect and if you have any follow-up questions at all. Um, moving forward, just a little bit of an overview of some of the topics we're going to touch on. We have a lot to cover today. Um, so kicking off, we'll get a little bit of an intro for anyone who might not be familiar, um, what is Twilio actually? So we'll go through that. We'll go through some SMS terminology that should help to decode some of the language that you all are you know, likely to hear as you get into some more of these conversations. Um, we'll go and do a bit of a dive into short codes um, and that arena. For those of you who are already messaging on short code or who are interested in short codes, we'll talk a little bit about Spanish or multi-language SMS uh, campaigns, um, emojis, and considerations around deliverability for texting. We'll go through a bit about toll-free texting and what that looks like, um, some SMS compliance best practices. And if we have time, uh, I do have a little bit of material towards the end about P2P texting and A2P 10 DLC. Um, so jumping in, um, if you all could uh, just take a quick moment and enter into the chat your responses to just a couple of questions. Um, number one, thinking about the SMS landscape, which topic might sound more interesting for you? Uh, we have short codes, toll free texting, 10 DLC, compliance, or something else. And if it is something else, um, please feel free to type that something else in the chat. Uh, on number two, we have a question, is your team already managing SMS campaigns? Are you hoping to launch uh, that soon? So feel free to take a moment and type that into the chat. And um, great, and I'll take a look at some of the responses. Great, hoping to launch, best practices. 
Awesome. Perfect. Um, group texting, some great, interesting, um, really nice responses here. So without further ado, uh, we'll go ahead and move forward. Um, here we have a very light introduction to Twilio. What is Twilio? Um, Twilio is a global technology company. Um, I've used a term here, CPaaS company, and that means communication platform as a service company. Um, so we focus on revolutionizing global digital communications. And some of you may know that Twilio's um, APIs and some of our technology products have powered a lot of political campaign, um, messaging activity, nonprofit advocacy, labor union, um, political action committee, all of those types of groups, they've all used and are continuing to use Twilio's technology today. Um, so some of the logos that you see on the screen, I wanted to call out ZipWhip. Um, ZipWhip is a company that Twilio recently acquired just within the past couple of weeks. And why is this important for all of you? Um, ZipWhip is actually the premier provider for toll-free phone numbers that can be enabled uh, for high throughput toll-free texting. Um, so this actually positions Twilio to be a really uh, a great, you know, continuing to be a top tier provider of toll-free solutions for text messaging, as well as short code based solutions and long code or 10 DLC solutions for text messaging. Um, Twilio SendGrid for any of you who are involved on email outreach and advocacy, which is I imagine pretty much everyone. Um, Twilio SendGrid is the email tool uh, that powers Action Network's email. Um, so that is another side of Twilio's business. And lastly, we have Twilio.org, which is our social impact side of the business. Um, I would encourage anyone who's interested in reading some of our case studies to go to Twilio.org. Um, you can read about some of the awesome nonprofits that have already been um, benefiting from Twilio's offerings and some of our uh, support that we offer from the .org side of the company. All right, moving forward. Oh, we have so many acronyms. What do all of these even mean? Um, I will say that I don't want to bore you all too much, so we won't go through every single one of these. You can definitely um, Google is your friend if you're very curious to go through every single one. We're going to go into some of the more relevant uh, terms that I think would be more useful for you all to know. Um, I think you all might notice the theme that I'm definitely a dog person. Um, so you will notice some pictures um, on my intro slide. Those were my dogs and uh, we'll see some dogs and fun stuff throughout the presentation today. Um, MMS, Multimedia Messaging Service. If you want to send MMS messages out, you can do that. You can do that over a toll-free number. You can do that over a short code. Um, toll-free uh, and short code are both enabled to send picture messages. So that is in a nutshell what MMS means. SMS, uh, short message service. That's your plain old text. Uh, that is text message and that's plain and simple. P2P, what is P2P actually? Um, many companies in the landscape are uh, calling themselves P2P texting providers. Um, that's a little bit of a marketing terminology that's used by certain um, P2P texting companies. Um, the real difference, what I'm going to get into today is talking about what do the cell phone carriers classify as P2P uh, messaging and what is the CTIA, which uh, the CTIA is the trade association for uh, cell phone companies. Um, that's representing all of the different cell phone companies, the major carriers. Um, so CTIA's classification of P2P messaging is me taking my phone and typing out a message that I'm sending to my friend's phone or to my family member's phone. Um, that's the very classical uh, CTIA or the carrier definition of P2P, which is quite different. Um, from some of the definitions that you all might have heard. Um, what is A to P, application to person? Um, a to P is what's classified as uh, a channel that is appropriate for businesses or other entities like nonprofits or political campaigns. Um, now more than ever before, the shift in the landscape is that all of this messaging that's being sent by an organization or a business to what we call consumers or end users, your subscribers, that's going to be going over A to P routes or A to P pathways. Um, and the last thing I'll touch on here is MPS, which we'll dive into a little bit deeper in another slide. But this is uh, message segments per second. If you're not sure what a segment is, we're going to look at what that looks like uh, shortly in just a couple of slides. MPS is referring to your throughput. That's how quickly you're sending text messages out. 
um, and how many messages that you're able to send out in a given amount of time. Um, so I will leave the rest for you all uh, who would like to Google uh, on your own time, and we will get into some additional information now moving into the universe of short codes. Um, where we look at short codes, what is a short code? Um, here we have a couple of examples. You can see 501, 501 here. Uh, this is a COVID response texting program that's being uh, that's been operated by the World Health Organization. Crisis Text Line, which is a great organization, um, also running on Twilio. Uh, this is 741741 is what we call a, a vanity short code. You'll see the term vanity short code here. Vanity actually just means that you as your organization can choose what digits are included in the short code. That can be a little bit more memorable and better for branding purposes. It can also be a little bit more expensive to get access to a vanity short code. So if you're looking for a more cost-effective option for a dedicated short code, uh, then you would probably want to go look at a random short code, which is a random series of uh, auto just automatically generated numbers. That's going to be uh, five or six digits that are randomly generated for your random short code. Um, what about shared short codes versus dedicated short codes? As many of you might have heard, shared short codes are on the way out. Um, what is a shared short code would be a short code number that might be shared by, let's say, 40 or 50 or even more organizations, all running their uh, SMS campaigns on the same one short code. Um, why was that a problem and why have uh, cell phone carriers decided to phase out shared short codes? The problem with that being if you have 50 different organizations running SMS campaigns all in the same one short code, all it takes is one bad actor. Um, let's say who decides to start spamming to cell phone numbers of people who have not actually opted in. And um, all of the, the carrier, if the carrier decides to audit that short code, let's say um, Verizon comes in and does an audit of that short code, the entire short code could be shut down and that would negatively impact all SMS traffic for all of those organizations sharing that code. Um, so that's obviously not great. Um, for that reason, we definitely see a move of organizations moving off of shared short codes and looking into things like toll-free um, as a text messaging solution. So um, on the timeline for the shared short code ban, um, that's definitely not happening this year. Uh, we from Twilio's side are expecting to see that that might come into effect uh, next year at some point. Um, so I'll save the shared short code questions for, you know, we can have time for Q&A towards the end. And we'll move forward into some of the positive and some of the positive aspects and some of the potential downsides for short code texting. Um, so the really great thing about short code texting is the very high NPS or the very high throughput that's available. Um, it's the best in comparison with all of the different phone number types that you might use for texting. Um, you can see here 100 message segments per second or greater. Um, and what, you know, we'll get into what is the NPS uh, available for toll free in just a bit. Um, and we'll move on to the next point. So if you do go with a uh, short code for your texting program, this means that you don't need to be concerned about carrier filtering. Well, what is carrier filtering? What does that mean? Um, basically, what that means is that uh, if you are running your text program on a toll free number, the carriers, including Verizon, especially uh, T-Mobile and AT&T, all have um, specific algorithms or machine learning approaches that they'll use to try to detect um, when spam SMS might be going out over a toll-free number. Um, and then they might start blocking messages that you are trying to send to your supporters, which is obviously not ideal. Um, you wanna think about the, the, how you can have a more strategic approach to avoiding or reducing the risk of carrier filtering. So if you do have a, a better budget and you don't mind paying a little bit more money for an access to a dedicated short code, that can be a great way to avoid carrier filtering. Um, short codes are generally better for marketing and branding purposes. Um, they can be, however, costly and time consuming uh, for the setup process. We usually say it takes about eight to 12 weeks for the entire end-to-end -end application process and the vetting process. And your organization would need to submit a number of different pieces of information uh, in order to get approved for that dedicated short code um, and stricter compliance requirements moving forward. So that's uh, sort of everything that I think I wanted to focus on and highlight around short codes moving forward. We'll look into uh, 
some examples of what is what are we talking about when we talk about NPS and message segments per second, right? Here uh, on the screenshot, you can see a texting program that is running on a short code. And um, I, I, this is actually a screenshot of my phone. So I texted a keyword, ditch bait. Um, this is a program, a texting program focusing on helping teams to quit vaping. Um, and I can see that in the automated response message that was broken up into two different segments um, with a message one of two, message two of two. Um, when you're thinking about sending out messages, um, I know this is particularly important over short code, but it's kind of useful when you're thinking about sending over toll free and other types of, types of numbers as well. Um, think about making your message um, more concise. It's helpful to keep it all into one segment if that's possible. The reason why I say that is that uh, carriers and the process of getting this message, you know, from the Action Network platform out to the phone of your supporter, there's no guarantee that those segments are going to land on the phone in the correct order. Um, so you might have the second segment first on the user's phone, and it can be a little bit jumbled for the experience. Um, you do want to keep that in mind. Um, what if I need to include emojis or Spanish special characters? Um, we're going to look into some considerations about that. Um, thinking about the number of available characters that you have to work with when you're crafting your outbound text, you have about 160 characters as long as you are not using emojis or if you are not using Spanish spe Spanish special characters. I mean, I'm using Spanish as an example. I've also worked with um, certain city government agencies that were looking to send uh, text messages out in Chinese or Arabic or various other languages that are sort of um, using different character sets for the uh, message body. If you do need to include special characters or emojis, that's going to reduce the number of available characters that you have before your message is going to start getting broken up into segments. Um, so again, uh, I'll show you in just a moment, there is a way that you can calculate before you send your message how many segments your message is going to get converted into. Um, so it's useful to use that segment calculator tool that I'll show you in a moment. Um, when you're thinking about some you know, older phones, uh, what we call feature phones that are non-smartphones, sometimes those are not able to receive MMS or picture messages. So um, the suggestion on that is to include a link or a URL if the user can then tap on a link and then open up their web browser and look at a picture or an image that you were hoping for them to see. Um, I can't stress enough the importance of sending test messages before you send a larger uh, broadcast message out to your larger list. Um, you can create a test message sort of process or workflow by um, collecting the cell phone numbers of some of your team members. Um, you can bring in a cell phone number of one or two of your interns or your volunteers and just send a test message so you can see what that message is going to look like um, with a small group of test numbers, maybe let's say four or five cell phone numbers. Ideally, you want to use different devices. So you want to test and see what your message is going to look like on Android versus iPhone. For example, those are going to be a little bit different for the user experience. Um, all right. And then on the fundraising piece, we'll look at some examples of how to fundraise by mobile messaging and how um, not to fundraise by mobile messaging. So we'll see that momentarily. Um, here's the awesome messaging segment calculator that I mentioned. Um, I've included the URL down here at the bottom. Um, and you would simply input the message that you're thinking about sending out to your supporters here in the box. Um, and this is going to give you an estimation of how many segments that this message might be broken up to, uh, including considerations about what I mentioned earlier, emojis and foreign language special characters. Um, all right. So speaking of Spanish messaging programs, um, for anyone who's curious and would like to see the experience of opting into um, another Spanish messaging program, which I think is really well crafted, um, you can see the short code here is 26262. You can text consejos is the keyword and you'll get the welcome confirmation confirmation message. Uh, this is a program from Univision. And here we can see a great example of an MMS message and what that looks like. Um, obviously, including images is a really great tactic that a lot of advocacy, nonprofit, and political organizations have been able to use to drive supporters to take certain actions. Um, 
This example, what we can see here uh, with Bernie, one of the uh, uh, a little bit older calls to action, um, text a keyword to a specific short code, and that's going to automatically add a donation onto your cell phone bill. Um, this is really being phased out. Um, there are issues and some problems and challenges around trying to do this text to donate functionality. Some cell phone plans for your supporters might actually block this functionality, so you won't uh, you won't tend to see as high of a conversion rate um, if you are trying to launch this type of program. That's why I usually in, encourage folks and organizations to include a URL in your outbound text that you're sending, and that will redirect your supporter to a web form that would be a secure web page they can use to complete their donation. Um, all right, here we have an example of what a Spanish language sign up or opt in form might look like. Um, this one, as you can see, does not have a field for mobile number or cell phone, but it could be easily added here if you want to um, reach specific demographics. If you want to, say, run a bilingual messaging program, you would have, for example, an English language opt in page with um, all of the field descriptions in English, and then you could have a separate Spanish web opt-in page like this, which is going to capture uh, your supporters and your prospective supporters that have Spanish as their language preference. Um, moving forward here, we have just a couple of examples of some short code messaging programs that I think are really well done. Um, the reason why, uh, you can see, I'll just highlight um, on the second screenshot here, this is color of change. They did a really great job um, identifying what, what's called the sender ID. So there are some elements what you want to think about. What do I need to include when I am deciding um, how to craft the body of my outbound messages that I'm sending out to my list of opted in cell phones? Um, number one, you have the name of a person. So immediately you see, hi, it's Arisha. That's very personalized. Um, that's awesome. You have the name of the organization that the message is coming from. Um, and then at the bottom, you see nice compliant opt-out language. Um, stop to quit. There are other examples of compliant opt-out terms that are available in Twilio's messaging policy. So you can definitely refer to Twilio's messaging policy if you need guidance on what is or is not compliant for opt-out language that you would include in your text. Um, you can see an example of a branded link here. Um, so definitely, I'll say this a couple of times throughout, but you want to avoid using Bitly or Owly or any public free link shorteners when you're including links in your outbound messages. Um, there are a couple of reasons for that, but um, mainly if you are texting on toll free, then um, including Bitly or Owly free public link shorteners in your outbound messages will uh, tend to increase the number of instances of carrier filtering or carriers blocking your messages. Uh, generally, carriers view Bitly and Owly links as indicators of spam. Um, so I think that is important to keep in mind. All right, moving forward. Um, finally, we get to, I think, a, a really great and really um, helpful topic for a lot of folks um, who are thinking about launching. Um, you know, how do we launch texting? And you know, maybe we're not ready for a dedicated short code just because of cost and the amount of time that it's going to take to set up that dedicated short code. Um, so you can look into toll free. Um, that's a great option. Here we have a chart. Um, this is giving a little bit of a breakdown. I'm not going to go through every single item on this chart, um, but what you can see uh, the throughput uh, difference. You know, we talked about how short codes have the highest possible throughput. That's going to allow you to send the largest number of messages at the fastest speed. Um, and here you have a range of throughput available. Um, you have some different choices about uh, what your MPS or your message segments per second is going to look like. It's going to be a little slower and a little reduced compared to short code. Um, but I do want to say toll free numbers are going to give you better throughput, especially after you go through the verification process. Um, it'll be better and faster uh, compared with long code messaging. So that's a benefit. Um, anything else I want to call out? Again, just reminding that um, MMS and you can attach GIFs, you can include um, those types of multimedia assets when you're sending messages out through both short code and also through toll free numbers. Um, all right. And just for fun, um, some examples of really nice messaging programs that are currently running on toll free numbers. Um, here is a 
uh, toll-free based texting program where you can text in your zip code or the city and state where you're based and you can learn um, whose land, which native land you're on. Um, so I think that's really wonderful and really informative. Um, and here we have Ray McGuire who's running for New York City mayor um, with a really great um, very compliant welcome confirmation message um, as far as, you know, when, when I text help, for example, I'm getting back an email address that I can use to contact that campaign to get additional information, or maybe I want to email them to say that I want to volunteer to support for the campaign. Um, so those are some great examples, I think. And um, what is verified toll free? You know, as we're getting into the universe of toll free numbers, um, toll free number is can it be a number of different prefixes? I think we have, I don't know how many now, 844, 833, so on and so forth. Um, but the, the key to toll free and how you want to think about using toll free for sending out texts to your supporters and prospective supporters, um, it's a way for you to verify and get pre approval from barriers for your use case. Um, so, right, the verification process, Action Network, um, if you're interested in getting set up with a toll-free number for texting, you can reach out to your friends at Action Network, and they can guide you through that process of um, what different pieces of information would be required in order for you to get verified for a toll-free number. Um, this is going to greatly reduce carrier filtering. There's no additional cost to go through this verification process. Um, again, this process is handled through ZipWhip, um, recently acquired by Twilio. So we'll probably, I'm expecting, we're going to be streamlining this toll-free verification process even more moving forward in the upcoming months uh, as benefit of the acquisition. Um, and improved deliverability in US and Canada. I don't know if anyone uh, on this training is involved or thinking about texting out into Canada. Um, I have worked with some organizations and uh, political campaigns that are doing work in Canada and SMS programs are alive and well there uh, also. So it's great to know that toll free is an option for a little bit more than just the United States. Um, the last one, I just can't stress enough. I think this term might throw people off snowshoeing. Like I thought that was a winter sport. Uh, snowshoeing, what does that mean in the context of texting over toll free numbers? Um, really, the expectation here is that if you have one use case or, you know, sort of one main use case, like I want, I'm a nonprofit, I want to get a toll-free number so that I can text my supporters to help them understand how to volunteer, how to donate, how to get involved with my nonprofit, that's um, pretty straightforward. You really only need one toll-free number um, to do that. And what uh, some, you know, sometimes we see uh, companies, for example, they'll set up multiple different toll free numbers and they're trying to actually achieve faster, higher throughput um, by, you know, setting up multiple different toll free numbers for really the same use case. Um, that's very much frowned upon and could potentially cause problems um, when we get into questions related to um, messaging program audits. Uh, you do, uh, especially if you're a smaller to medium sized organization, you should only need one toll free number for your messaging program. Um, all right, so high throughput toll free. So again, you're kind of hearing there are a couple of steps in this process. You get set up with a toll free number. Um, you go through the process of verification. And then once the verification process is complete, um, then you have another option available, which is enabling that verified toll free number for high throughput. Um, you say, you know, we want to be able to send out more messages a little bit faster. Um, so you would then contact your friends at Action Network and you would let them know that you're interested in high throughput toll free. Um, they can provide you with some additional guidance on, you know, how fast might we want, like how high of an NPS could be good for us. Um, based off of the size of your opt-in list, how many messages you're expecting to send out on a monthly basis. Um, so that, you know, this is a great option that is available for you. You can see the default, if you don't upgrade your throughput on a toll-free number, it's going to be the default of three MPS. Um, if you remember, that was on a short code, 100 MPS, so much higher. Um, for high throughput toll-free, allows for 25 MPS or greater. Um, so that's definitely something that could be beneficial for folks on this training. Um, the provisioning process is so much quicker compared with a dedicated short code. Um, again, dedicated short code, eight to 12 weeks. 
Um, this process shouldn't take, I would say, more than a week or 10 uh, business days maximum. Um, so that can be really great for folks that are looking to get up and running quickly. Um, again, works on Canadian networks as well, capped at 50 MPS in Canada, and we talked about the significantly reduced carrier filtering. Um, my favorite topic, <laughs> I'll try not to put folks to sleep. Um, compliance is so important. And I would say that um, now the way that the landscape for mobile messaging is changing, um, historically, we've seen that a lot of entities, organizations, campaigns, they've been able to just grab a, a long code, a regular phone number and start texting on that number. There was no registration required in the past. There was no authentication necessarily required. Um, I think that's a lot of the reasons why, you know, a 10 digit long code became so popular so quickly um, because there really wasn't a lot of monitoring or oversight for the types of messages that were going out, uh, let's say in the past years. And now um, carriers have taken notice. Carriers have started to um, get a lot more spam complaints from people saying, hey, I'm getting texts. I don't know where these texts are coming from. Um, I didn't sign up for these. And so we're seeing some changes on the compliance landscape. Um, your organization, particularly since today we're focusing on short code and toll-free messaging, um, you have to have opt-in. You have to have proof that um, the people that you're sending texts out to have actually signed up to receive those messages. Um, really, people should know what they're signing up for. Um, you want to always be mindful to give your supporters an option to unsubscribe at any time. And that's going to boost your engagement rates because um, the benefit of having a fully 100% opted in mobile messaging program is you're going to automatically see higher engagement rates and action rates. So I think that's actually a net positive. Um, what else? Is it okay for me to purchase a list of cell phone numbers and start texting those users? Um, that's actually a violation of Twilio's messaging policy. Uh, so we absolutely say that it is never okay to purchase um, lists of cell phone numbers and to then start texting out to those lists. I think that, um, again, if you're wondering about how do I, how do I start from scratch, you know, maybe you don't have a list of opted in people yet. Um, I absolutely think that Twilio in partnership with your friends at Action Network can give you some additional guidance and strategies around how to build and grow your list of opted in supporters. Um, so that's that piece. Um, oh, sorry, jumped ahead. So on this question, um, if you're part of, I, I put a nonprofit example here, but if you're really part of any organization and you have, let's say, a strategic partner organization, but you know, you've gotten an offer from another organization that they want to share their list of opted-in cell phone numbers and they just want to give it to you for you to start texting out to those people. Is that okay because you're not actually purchasing the list? Um, generally, the answer is no. Um, so again, um, with a real stronger emphasis now more than ever before from the carrier perspective, again, talking about the major carriers, especially Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, they really want to see that the people you're sending the messages to already expect to receive those messages coming from you, from your organization. And there's a really strong, very clear emphasis on wanted messaging. Um, so if you have a great opt-in program and you've you know, done the work of building that opt-in list, then you don't have anything to worry about because the people that you're sending text to are going to be happy and excited to receive those messages from you and from your organization. Um, we already talked about toll-free SMS and uh, short code both being classified as A to P channels. And so anything that's classified as a A to P or application to person channel is going to require that opt-in. Um, again, we have a great call to action from Truth, uh, a, a wonderful organization that I've worked with in the past. Um, we talked a little bit about Twilio's messaging policy. Um, everybody loves cats sometimes. What is proper consent? So this is the definition directly from Twilio's messaging policy. Um, you can't obtain consent by purchasing a list. And that's pretty straightforward. Talking about compliance and deliverability, um, I've gone over this a little bit before. We're going to look at some um, text samples uh, in just uh, a moment or two. And what you want to always make sure that you're including certain elements when you're sending your outbound messages, particularly when you're sending that first message um, to welcome a brand new subscriber who's opting into your messaging program. 
you want to include that sender ID. Who is the organization that's sending this message out to this person in the universe? Um, you want to include compliant opt-out language. Um, if you want to see what compliant opt-out language looks like, you can refer to Twilio's messaging policy. And we have um, all different examples of what terms, um, what specific words are compliant and that we recommend to include as opt-out or unsubscribe options in your messages. Um, the help prompt, we took a look at that. Um, really help a user should be able to text the keyword help at any time to get more information about your program and ideally to get either a telephone number or an email address that they can use to contact your organization for further questions. Um, very briefly, you know, in the instance where we have some advocacy organizations, um, some, you know, nonprofit folks or whoever in the landscape out in the general universe might be doing work around marijuana or, you know, some folks I've spoken with say, oh, well, we're advocating for the legalization of marijuana in a certain state. Is that okay for us to send these types of messages via Twilio? Um, Currently today, the answer is no. Um, that's actually prohibited content according to Twilio's messaging policy. And the reason for that being uh, marijuana is currently federally illegal. Um, so that is the situation with marijuana and uh, any related terminology. Um, so I just wanted to call that out for folks. Um, we talked about avoiding public link shorteners. Use custom short links as much as possible. That's also going to build trust with your recipients. People are going to um, feel more comfortable clicking on a link if it is not a Bitly or Alley link. Um, avoid texting landlines or deactivated numbers. Um, if you have questions and you're not sure how to identify, you know, hey, we have a list of cell phone numbers. Um, we're not sure there might be some landlines on this list. Um, definitely reach out to your uh, friends at Action Network. They can help you um, with some guidance on that. We definitely have some Twilio-based solutions. Uh, we have a Twilio deactivations API. Um, we have a lookup uh, feature, which can help to look up to verify when something is or is not a valid uh, deliverable cell phone number. Um, so that's something to uh, keep in mind. I would say top of mind. Um, you don't want to be sending messages if those messages have a low chance of successfully being delivered to people's phones, right? So you wanna really aim for, I would say a good level of deliverability is if you're seeing about 80 to 90% minimum of your messages being delivered to users' phones. Um, again, why not 100%? Um, there are always gonna be reasons why messages might fail. Um, certain, you know, if a cell phone is out of service coverage area, maybe someone is traveling, uh, it, you know, they're on a camping trip and they have no cell coverage, that's one of many reasons why messages can sometimes fail. Um, personalizing your outbound texts, um, we'll look at an example of what that looks like. Um, and I've included, you know, hi, merging in your supporter's first name. If you have the name of the person, it's great to bring that into the message that you're sending out via SMS. It's going to feel that it's going to make that communication feel much more personal. Um, all right, we'll do a quick time check. Um, we're getting close to what I wanted to wrap um, just to allow time for Q&A, but I think we have a few more minutes. Um, so looking here, we have, you know, here's some kind of concerning uh, message examples. And um, on this, this is a message that's been sent out by a toll free number. Um, the issue here being that we can see uh, Bitly. Um, so you definitely, again, want to avoid including Bitly links. You want to use custom branded links. Um, it's totally fine to include URLs um, and links in your outbound messages. You just want to make sure um, that those are ideally branded with um, something that's unique to your organization. Um, and then on here, we can see a long code based message that's been sent out. Uh, Looking at this message, um, what can, feel free to type into the chat box um, if you can tell me what is one good thing about this message that we see, hey, it's Eric, we have reached over 260,000. Um, so let's go ahead and take a moment to tell me what you think is one best practice that we can see uh, in that message. And right, I'll take a look and see what kind of responses we're getting. Okay, great. Personalized ID, excellent. IDs by night, hi, it's Eric. 
wonderful. Um, we do also have the sender ID. I blanked out the name of the organization just to protect privacy. Um, and then another great thing on here is the tech stop to opt out. Um, Disclose its purpose, right? That's absolutely, you want your text to be actionable. Um, definitely, you want folks to understand like, why is this organization sending me a message? Um, you know, and this is, you know, obviously there's a goal. I would say the one, another thing that I love about this message is the um, numbers. So, right, we're looking to raise 8,000 by tonight. Can you help? Um, the stop to opt out is excellent. Um, one thing that I would say, often I advise organizations to capitalize and put um, the word stop in all caps just to make it a little clearer for the end user to understand that that is a keyword that they can respond with the word stop and that will unsubscribe uh, the person from the messaging program. Um, again, I was sad to see the bit.ly link here, um, but generally overall, we do have a lot of great elements included in this text. Um, moving forward with a couple of uh, other great examples, I think the one that we can see, hi, Jerry, it's Michael with the Frontline Election Defenders. Um, this is great. This is great for so many reasons. Um, can you make it? You know, it's making the text actionable. Stop to stop messages. I have an option to opt out right away. And when I responded, yes, I can make it. Um, not only did I get a branded custom link, I also got an invitation to share um, details about some of my friends who might want to join into the same activity. Um, I've really seen a lot of exciting opportunities for growth and for kind of a multiplier effect with advocacy, nonprofit, political organizations when you have this concept of asking your supporter who's already subscribed to your messaging program to invite some of their friends either to join a volunteer activity or invite their friends to opt into your messaging program. Um, I've actually seen great list growth just by this kind of um, ask a friend to join in, you know, doing something or signing up to receive texts. Um, I just one thing on this message um, with the uh, message on the right. Hi, this is Blake. Generally, this is great. Can someone tell me what is wrong with the message on the right? Type in the chat box if you can. Okay, and does anybody know my, what might be a problem? I think I might have to give a hint. Okay, so the issue being nine is not compliant. Boom, um, that is the correct answer. So it is not compliant. Um, we do see this across a number of different organizations. I think the goal being that, oh, well, we can just tell people to text back with the number nine. Even you know, if there's people are uh, able to program, they'll add in code to sort of automatically opt out somebody who texts nine. You can't do that, the, uh, the number nine, or really any digit where you're telling a subscriber to text a number back to you to opt out, that's not compliant. Um, so again, simplest way to resolve that would be just stick with stop. Um, you can tell people to stop uh, if they would like to opt out. Um, I think that uh, unsubscribe and certain other compliant keywords, again, are included in Twilio's messaging policy. Um, all right. And I might breeze through. I'm probably going to stop. Unfortunately, we might not have time to get through. Um, and Seth, how are we doing on time? I, I'm happy to start in with questions. Um, I do want us to have Q&A. And I'm, I'm happy to share the slide deck for folks to review the remaining material yeah. as well. I think, um, thank you so much. Um, yeah. This has been really, really eye-opening. A lot to cover in a short amount of time. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about, um, I'll, I'll close up here and then I'll toss it back over for you to, um, to, to question. I'm only going to take two minutes here. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks all that's still here joining us. Um, let me share my screen really quickly. Um, I know folks uh, joining, um, thumbs up if you can see my, my screen here. I know folks joining um, might be interested. They, you know, may or may not have access to mobile messaging. Um, again, um, as, as uh, Jerry has, has shared, uh, we do have uh, Twilio as our, as our technology that's helping us send these uh, messages out for you. So we do um, have mobile messaging as an add-on uh, subscription feature for Action Network partners. 
Um, it is available. Uh, we do demo the tool by itself on Wednesdays, um, uh, first and last uh, Wednesdays of the month at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, if you want to get a closer look at kind of what the tool looks like. Um, and uh, if you're interested, again, if you're a partner and you've used email, it's really as simple as the, the email platform. It looks very similar. Uh, the way that you target activists within the system are very similar. Um, I, if you are interested, I definitely encourage you to uh, join the demo for uh, the mobile for a mobile messaging tool set. Um, I see Mari has dropped the links in there, link in there to uh, the partnerships page. We actually just launched a new pricing calculator too, um, which will allow you to be able to kind of have understanding of, of cost based upon volume. Again, um, our costs are purely based upon volume. We're really trying to be able to um, provide things like uh, toll-free numbers uh, for smaller, small and medium orgs to be able to have uh, access to mobile messaging for the text program. It's really exciting. Um, we've done a few trainings on things like fun stuff like mobile, mobile um, uh, MMS, um, allowing you to do images in your images and GIFs, GIFs in your messages as well. Um, but just on the slide here, we note that, you know, it's integrated, um, so it's nice. So all your tools um, uh, and actions live in one place inside Action Network. Um, it's really intuitive, as I mentioned. Uh, it's a really similar uh, look, feel, workflow as the email tool. Um, so you really have that kind of full suite of digital tools um, that allow you to have that multi-channel approach uh, with the folks that you're organizing. List building, um, later on down the line, uh, this summer we're going to be doing a training specifically on forms. I think forms is a really overlooked, underutilized tool within our tool set. But if you want to build your list, you can do it with forms in Action Network. Um, and you can actually embed that form right on your website. Um, and then if you're collecting opt-in and mobile numbers, it all syncs back to Action Network. It's really nice. Um, and then we have advanced features. So if you have more resources on hand, um, we can look at uh, really understanding and using high-level segmentation, automation using our ladders tool. Mobile messaging is built into that as well. Um, and testing too, uh, which, you, which we offer too. I see Mari just dropped the mobile link. So if you go ahead and uh, sign up, you can participate in the demo this uh, Wednesday. If you can't make that one, we have it at the end of the month as well. Uh, that'll be June, can't believe it's June already. Um, and then lastly, the accessibility piece. Cannot speak to that enough. We've really uh, been um, fortunate enough to, to work with Twilio and partner with Twilio in order to kind of bring uh, mobile messaging um, as a new kind of tool um, although we've launched a, a year at this point, uh, we know that a lot of groups are really just kind of getting started. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Um, and we're, we're happy to uh, partner with you and help you as you kind of learn how to incorporate mobile messaging. It's a really exciting time, I think. Um, so that's all I wanted to share. Um, did you want to uh, take some questions? We have right around, I'd say five minutes uh, to drop those questions folks might have in the chat and we can try to get through uh, what we can. How's that sound? That sounds great. Um, Seth, I don't know if you wanted to call out any questions that you had noticed uh, that anyone was dropping into the chat. I sure. think there might, or, or I'm happy to just kind of take impromptu verbal questions as well. And the slide deck will have you, I, I think I'm gonna share the slide deck with you, Seth, and then you can help to share it out with the participants, is that? Most definitely, yeah. So everyone okay. that's joined today or RSVP will get a follow-up email. Uh, with the slides, thanks for making that available and also a recording of today's training. Mm -hmm. um, I will, I'm happily, uh, folks are muted just to cut down on background noise, but um, Mari has been able to answer quite a few questions that we had. We did have a question okay. about the Bitly. Um, if folks have a custom Bitly uh, URL, should they still not use that? That's a great question, and I did see that. I believe that as long as it is customized, then that should be fine. Um, Seth, do me a favor. I'm going to triple check on that question and I will get my um, final, final response to you via email. And you can definitely, if you wouldn't mind, share that out with folks so they can know. Fantastic. And yeah. I would say, just so this is Mari on the Action Network side, I would say we shorten all Action Network links automatically. Mm. And we recommend, um, we shorten to actn.et, so actnet. And we wouldn't recommend using a bit layer custom uh, shortener outside of the reasons that Jerry mentioned, you'd lose all of your link tracking as well. Mm. So you wouldn't on the report back for the mobile message that you sent out, you wouldn't get any data about link clicks if you're not using our, um, our shortener. Perfect. Thanks so much for that extra clarification. 
So super easy, just drop the link into the, <laughs> the platform and we'll take care of everything behind the scenes and you will not lose your uh, analytics uh, related to those links. Um, so keep it, keep it simple, one less tool to worry about, one less tool to kind of have to deal with. Absolutely. Um, cool. Yeah, I see uh, Mari has responded to the question about pricing. Tra pricing is super transparent. Definitely check out that partnerships page that was dropped in the link. Um, as I mentioned, there's a pricing calculator there. So you can actually see based upon your exact uh, volume and approximate cost. Um, we've really tried to, uh, again, accessibility is a keyword as far as help helping uh, organizations small um, and large, medium in between be able to access this. Um, I know uh, we wanted to present this because we kind of wanted to like kind of bring down the uh, fear level, apprehension level, um, sharing this good information. Um, to be able to just get started in, in, in learning about uh, how you might incorporate mobile messaging for your program if you haven't done that yet. Do we have any more questions? If you have questions, please drop them in the chat. Oh, and I did want to call out, um, Seth, I think that you mentioned that we'll be able to send around a survey um, so yeah. that it's incredibly helpful for myself, for you know my team over at Twilio. Um, we'd love to be able to offer future trainings and we'd absolutely uh, welcome constructive criticism and you know anything you'd like to share uh, to help us make this better in the future. All right. Cool. Thanks Thank so you. Much. And we'll include the uh, survey in that follow-up email um, and you'll receive that in the next 24 hours uh, as we kind of prepare today's materials to share out with folks. Thank you, Jerry, for partnering uh, with us today. Um, and uh, thanks everyone for joining, spending some time. Hopefully this helped you uh, demystify uh, some of the ins and outs of mobile messaging. Take care. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.